Hello and welcome back to the KCC channel. I'm Rob and I hope you are having a wonderful day today. Today we're jumping into some I don't work here lady. Before we start, I'd like to take a moment and acknowledge this comment from Ace of Spades. It says, Good morning, Rob. Thanks for all your excellent stories. Love listening while going about my day, especially your personal comments about the stories. Ace of Spades, thank you so much for your comment, and thank you for being a loyal viewer of KCC. Our first story today comes to us from Communism Don't Work. <laughs> I'm not the store Santa. Let's jump right in. Background and context. I'm a 65-year-old white male with a full white beard and a well-earned beer gut. At the time of this story, just after Thanksgiving, I was shopping at a fairly nice mall anchoring department store. Now, to be fair to the Karen of the story, I was wearing a bright red hoodie, but with old, nicely broken in jeans and grey Merrill hiking boots. Absolutely nothing like the business casual attire of the store employees. Also, nowhere near a full Santa suit. I know, I've got one. Okay, the story. I'm browsing the kids' clothing, trying to find something cute for one of my granddaughters. She likes shirt dresses, long shorts, and unicorns. I had a couple of her size t-shirts with the mythical beasties pictured on them in my cart, and was seeking for shorts to go with them, when I hear the call of the wild Karen. Excuse me, at a fairly high volume from somewhere behind me. Naturally, I ignored it, although I said a quick prayer for whatever luckless individual it was actually directed at. Silly me. Next thing to break my shopping focus was a painfully forceful three-fingered, I know because I felt three claws, blow to my shoulder. Hard enough to make me take an extra half step for balance. No mean feat since I'm 6 foot 250-ish pounds. My fight or flight reflex opted for fight boding ill for the poker since I'm a mildly PTSD veteran with a 44 bulldog pew pew on my hip. Yes, I have a permit, and no, this store does not forbid legally carried pew pews. I whip around to face my assailant, stepping back to open up space, my right hand instinctively going to my holster, more to ensure no one is grabbing for my pew pew than in any thought to pull it, my left coming up with fist clenched. Apparently, this startled a squawk from Karen, a 30 to 40 year old woman with an elementary age looking child in tow. She takes a half step back and I relax a bit. We eye each other for half a second or so in silence. I recover first. What is wrong with you? Why did you hit me? I bellowed. She's very contrite, mumbles an apology and flees. Just kidding. <laughs> with typical Karen logic, she screeches, I did no such thing, and if you weren't ignoring customers, I wouldn't have had to. I don't work. Now take me to your village or whatever. My niece wants her picture with you. What? I actually said that. I think my brain locked for a second trying to make sense of this nonsensical topic shift. You know where you take pictures of kids? Lady, I'm not a photographer. Total confusion now. I mean, I'm thinking, did I have a stroke or is she having one? Of course not. The kids sit on you and get their picture taken. What kind of Santa are you? Me, brain gears finally meshing, remembering the color of my sweatshirt. Ma'am, I'm not Santa. I'm a shopper just like you. Thinking, except I'm not crazy. Karen, puzzlement finally replacing entitled wrath on her face. Well, well, then you shouldn't dress like one. You're just a, a, a tease. Me shaking my head. So I shouldn't wear jeans? At that, I start to hear laughter. The kind of suppressed snort that gets away from someone who can't keep glee inside anymore. I turn and see a couple of employees and a few customers I hadn't noticed before with various expressions, ranging from mouth-covered snickering to red-faced, cheek-puffed grins. So does Karen, who stalks away without another word. Hardly my best comeback, but at least it pleased the peanut gallery. I simply bowed and went back to shopping. Oh, OP, I think you missed a golden opportunity. You could turn right around to Karen and just say, I know exactly what you've done and how much of a bad girl you've been this year. So you get nothing, which means your whole family gets nothing. Do you want to tell your kids that or shall I? By the way, I don't effing work here. 
do me a quick favor and take a look down below the video. If that subscribe button's still red, it means you're actually not subscribed to the KCC channel. Please hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories. Our next story today comes to us from this user, although I think I would butcher it if I said it, so I'm not going to try. I don't work here, chicken lady. Vegan reveal during medical emergency story. Let's jump right in. This is my story, and it blew up on r slash today I effed up until it got moderated due to the someone should not die in the story rule. People have been asking me to find somewhere to post this where the mods are happy to host. It is also a I don't work here lady story due to chicken lady. I'm at the supermarket browsing the wares near the end of an aisle. Round the corner I see a guy who looks a crusty punk type of fellow. He's shopping just the same as me until bam he goes straight down on the floor. I go over to him. He's sprawled on the floor. No movement. He looks unconscious. It seems to me he's having an epileptic fit or a seizure. I pull out my phone and dial 999 for the ambulance to come. Seconds later, the shop staff run over. They know first aid. I offer them my phone so they can speak to the ambulance people since they know better about looking out for the guy. The shop worker is checking his breathing, pulse, etc. and relaying that over on the phone. So I'm hanging around very concerned about the guy on the ground and also now just waiting patiently for my mobile to be returned. Suddenly, I get a tug on my elbow. It's a woman asking me about chicken. I'm like, what? Are there still chicken breasts there? She asks. I'm kind of overwhelmed by the situation, so I'm like, sorry, I can't check the shelves. There's someone on the floor has had a fit. The woman is undeterred. She's like, yeah, but I really want some chicken. I'm like, sorry, I don't know if there's any chicken. She says, can you just go look for me? I said, sorry, no, I don't know where the chicken is and I don't think anyone should be shopping in this area because there is a guy who had a fit and is lying on the floor. She's like, yeah, but why can't you just look for me? Don't you know where the chicken is? I don't know why, but this is the point I lose my temper. I say really loudly, no, I don't know where the chicken is because I am vegan. And at that moment, everything stops. The guy who was talking to the emergency dispatcher has gone silent. He's staring at me. His colleagues who are kneeling on the floor around the guy are looking at me in disgust. Even Chicken Woman is silent. It occurs to me that my announcement might have been the last thing that poor man having the seizure ever hears. Very quietly I ask, could I please have my phone back? He gives it to me and I shuffle out of the shop in shame. I don't know what happened to the man and I don't know if the woman ever got her chicken. F my life. Now at the bottom of this one, OP put a bunch of responses to common queries. Why was the chicken lady so rude? I don't know why people are rude. Why didn't chicken lady go around me? Well, this was a small supermarket on a city street. It was very cramped. I'm in the UK and we're short on space. Why didn't I tell the chicken lady that I don't work there? I did not realize that she had mistaken me for an employee until someone pointed it out. I was kind of overwhelmed and clearly was unsuccessful in putting myself in her shoes. Why do I not know where the chicken is? Firstly, even if I did know where the chicken is, I would still have kept Chicken Lady away from the area because there was a guy having a fit. It's not appropriate for people to step over someone who has collapsed. Back to the question, why do I not know where it is? I guess I am just not that observant. It's not something I would normally buy, so I don't remember what fridge shelf it would be on. Why do you call having a seizure a fit? A fit is a common synonym for seizure in the UK. Honestly, the only part of the conversation that those people heard was you snapping at her because she was being completely unreasonable. That is not your fault, and you should be holding no shame at all because of that situation. Our next story today comes to us from Lady Azimuth. No, I don't work here, and that's not my manager. Let's jump right in. Long time lurker here, this isn't the most exciting because, <laughs> real life, but damn if it hasn't annoyed me for like three weeks straight. So to start, if y'all don't know, when you see someone working in a kiosk in a store or mall, they don't, in most cases, work for that store. Usually, they are hired by a marketing company that is hired by the store specifically to sell whatever it is. In my case, credit cards for a hardware store. 
I won't say the name because I like being employed, but I live in Canada and that should give you all the info you need there. This is done because usually, this involves a pretty particular knowledge of a specific product as well as the ability to sell and meet quotas and stuff. So the long and short is, I don't work for Canadian hardware store. Now, I help people as long as it does not get in the way of my work. If they need to know where something is, I'll tell them or look it up on their freely available public app. The unfortunate side of this is that because it's COVID times, there's usually a lack of staff. And if you answer one person's question, it attracts like four other people with questions. One day, I was working a later shift than usual, and I was doing my thing, and someone asked for directions for an item. I knew where it was off the top of my head, so I answered. Meanwhile, an older gentleman that looked a bit run down was glaring at me. Now, I paid no mind, because I have a resting bee face myself, so I don't pay attention to foul looks alone. He, however, wasn't saying anything, so I launched into my sales pitch for the card, and then he started walking away. So I trailed off and stopped. When I stopped, he stopped walking, spun on his heel, and looked at me. The following conversation went as follows. What? Oh, I'm sorry, I was giving you my sales pitch, but you just started walking away, so I stopped. I need you to do your job and get this random hardware tool out of the case. I'm sorry, I don't work for Canadian Hardware Store, I don't have the keys. If you find someone in a red shirt, you work for Canadian Hardware Store. I actually just work for the credit card place, I'm not a part of the Canadian Hardware Store team. Give me your manager! I'd have to call her personal phone, and as this is Canadian Hardware Store business and not card company related, I will not be doing that, I'm sorry. You salesmen are so effing annoying. Some of you will stalk me across the store every time I come in and ask me twice and won't leave me alone. Me, who has not left my kiosk because I am lazy and don't like wandering. I'm sorry to hear that. They shouldn't. Our handbook and training says not to be aggressive and pushy, though I have seen some people be like that in my off time. I know how annoying it can be. Gent, clearly not knowing what to be angry about and clearly wanting a fight. You should be ashamed of yourself blinking slowly, not sure how to respond. You're a panhandler. You're begging for money and taking advantage of poor people. I'm on welfare because this was supposed to be a full-time job and they have only been giving me one six-hour shift a week. You're worse than the bums on the street. Go effing beg outside. Me, knowing not to respond to this clearly alcoholic, poorly dressed single dude, I need you to get the tool out and then take me to your manager now. As I said before, I don't work here. And if you find someone in a red shirt, nobody effing works here. Nobody works. Nobody works. Where are the staff? Sighing. I don't know. They're probably just busy. There are red staff call buttons everywhere around the store. If you press it, someone will come. I will find your manager and I will make sure that all of you vultures never work in any of these stores again. Obviously, nothing happened. Nobody said anything. Nobody talked to me about it. The staff never said anything, and my managers never said anything. And it's because I don't effing work for the store and don't have the dang keys. Jack off. Like, I understand not knowing that originally, and I get why you may think that I would work here, but you would think that the different outfit, the dedicated kiosk, the lanyard, and the fact that I told you thrice would point out that I don't work here. You know, there are just perpetually upset people for no good reason in every single store. You can pick them out from across the room because they have this permanent scowl creased into their facial muscles because they haven't smiled since the last century. You avoid these people at all costs because you know that no matter what you do for them, it's never going to be good enough. Our next story today comes to us from Sammy Girl 7 I was the idiot. Let's jump right in. Background. I have a disability that will sometimes make it painful to walk, require the use of a cane or walker. Also, my favorite is I can just randomly fall down. It isn't the type of falling where it looks like you tripped, but just a straight down crumple. It can be very embarrassing and today was one of those days. I was doing some shopping at Walmart, pushing my cart, and boom, leg gave out and I'm on the ground. Lots of people run over to see if I'm okay. Thank you, nice people. I go through my always hurried explanation of, I'm okay, no I don't need medical help, 
This just happens due to a disability. Like always, people are trying to help, but then, like a parting of the Red Sea, an employee in a blue polo and khakis walks through the small crowd. He lets me get up on my own because I said I could, and guides me to the bench by the pharmacy. I explain again, and he offers to help me shop. I say thanks, but I'm done, because I don't even have my walker or cane in the car, plus I have to push my cart. He offers a mobility scooter, but I just want to leave because I'm embarrassed. He gets really excited and tells me to wait and walks away. He brought back a cane and says sorry, but the walkers are all boxed up and he will push my cart. He just has this look of pure joy. I'm thinking this guy just doesn't want to do whatever task he has been assigned, so I say sure, I've been there before. We walk and I claim I only need a couple items. I need it a lot, but again, I'm embarrassed and just want to go home and cry. We talk while he helps me get things, load it on the belt, puts it in my car. I try to tip him and ask the best way to let his boss know how great he was. Then, oh, I don't work here. I nearly died. I started apologizing faster than anyone ever has. I started to explain because of his clothing. I, oh, wait, that's right. Walmart employees don't have to wear blue shirts now, they wear a vest. He tried so hard not to laugh, but failed. I asked him why he helped me if he didn't work there. He said because his mother taught him to help people. It was too much. I started crying in the parking lot. After I pulled myself together, we chatted briefly. We exchanged numbers and are going to grab coffee with his girlfriend later this week. I moved last year and have had trouble making new friends because of the pandemic. So now I might have two new ones. Best fall I've ever had. Most embarrassing too. Oh, OP, it's not a fall. It's just an unscheduled floor meeting. That person who helped you out, they are just a good person. And they were taught this behavior by great parents. We don't get a whole lot of feel good stories on this channel. So when we do have one, it just makes it extra special. Thank you for sharing, OP. Our last story today comes to us from Ghostly Sammy. Apparently, I'm a bad GameStop employee. Let's jump right in. I work at a second-hand game store as a volunteer, might I add. Definitely not a GameStop. This happened last week on Friday. My uncle came home, and I had some money saved up. He needed a new cable for one of his controllers. I knew this particular store had PS3 games for pretty cheap. So I take my saved up money and go with him. So we walk in, he goes over to talk to an employee, and I go over to the PS3 games. I'm an average looking teenager, somewhat tall for age, sweatpants and hoodie, old sneakers, and short curly hair. I definitely didn't have any type of resemblance to an employee. So I'm kneeling down and browsing the PS3 games, seeing if anything caught my eye, or if I had heard of any and wanted them previously. I notice another pair of shoes, and hear a nervous, excuse me, so I stand up and move over some so the person could browse the shelf too. This is the entrance of Nice Kid. He looks around my age and looks really confused. After a few minutes of silence, he nervously asks, Excuse me, but do you have any recommendations? I recently got a PS3 and I'm pretty confused. Me, rather excited because I barely ever get to just nerd out with someone. Depends, what type of thing do you like? We get into a conversation. I help him pick a few games. All good, right? Nope. I glance up to find my uncle, as I don't see anything else of my interest or that I'd been after. Instead, I'm met with some lady, crazy lady, rolling her eyes a few feet from me. Are you finally done slacking off? I need some help. Her tone is rather rude and impatient, like I was wasting her time. Depends. What are you looking for? I don't like confrontation, so figure maybe I could help. I want XYZ for XYZ system and make it quick. I don't have a lot of time. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Very confused. I want XYZ for XYZ. She was getting louder, angrier, and talking much slower. Oh, I don't work here. Clearly you do. You were helping Nice Kid. At this point, two people come over. Nice Kid and my uncle. Nice Kid rushed over and grabbed Crazy Lady's hand. Mom, stop. They were just helping to be nice. He sounds annoyed, like this has happened before, and also like he feels sympathy for me. My uncle comes over and grabs my hand, lightly pulling me to stand next to him and glaring daggers at this woman. 
He's very protective of me, as me and my mom have lived with him since I was two and a half. Are you okay, OP? I'm fine. People are just crazy and stupid. I honestly just wanted to get out of there by now, so pay, leave, and then get to play my game. Crazy lady having heard my remark, I'm not stupid, you useless bee. Nice kid stepped in front of crazy lady. Mom, stop it. At this point, I was scared. I don't do yelling well thanks to some more personal reasons, and so I was somewhat hiding behind my uncle. At this point, it seemed like nice kid wanted to smack crazy lady, crazy lady wanted to kill me, and my uncle may just go crazy. He's ex-military and has no patience for stupid people. I just frown and gently tug on my uncle's arm. Let's just go, we have our things, I said, seeing the cables in his other hand, probably for charging his controller or something. She's still yelling as me and my uncle walk off, leaving nice kid and crazy lady. We pay, get asked a few questions about it as crazy lady is causing a disturbance, and as we aren't at fault, get to go. I have no clue what happened to crazy lady, don't really care. I've thoroughly enjoyed my game, uncle's charger works, and nothing bad happened consequence-wise. Man, some people really confuse and annoy me. At the end of a story like this, you cannot help but feel bad for nice kid, because they're growing up with that for a parent. You know that some of those traits are going to rub off on them, and it sounds like they're scared to even bug somebody. Ugh, the parenting, no. Check out all five OPs linked in the description down below. I thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you tomorrow.